a big fat panda. I'm not a big fat panda. I'm the big fat panda. Skadoosh. Welcome to Big Fat Panda show number 37. That is Disney master artist Kevin John. He is here as our guest today. Amazing guest, amazing art. Uh, let me thank my exclusive sponsor, David's Vacation Club Rentals at dvcrentals.com. If you get a chance, please check out dvcrentals.com. You do not have to own a real estate interest in the Disney Vacation Club to utilize all its benefits. It is a secret. So check out dvcrentals.com. There is a price calculator right there on their website. You'll know exactly how much what you want will cost. Lewis the Crocodile is back in Mickey's Royal Friendship Fair. For sensitivity issues that I completely understand, he was removed, or actually he never actually made it into the show when the show opened, but he was scheduled to be in the show. He is now back. Let's welcome Lewis. Allow me to introduce my new pals from the land of the bewitching volume. Lewis, Prince Naveen, and Princess Tiana. It's great to meet you. Oh, the land of the bewitching volume. What's that like? It's a land of dreams, good cooking, and jazz. Always love playing jazz with the big boys. Swinging good time to me. Hit it, Lewis. And speaking about things added to shows, uh, Star Wars, A Galactic Spectacular, the amazing uh, projection fireworks show over at Disney's Hollywood Studios, they added their fire effects. This was in their literature, uh, like their promotional literature before the show, but we never saw it. Fire effects are there, and well, hold on, you said, just take a look for a second. that heat even from really far away back on the boulevard it is it's pretty intense and it's great i always imagine dorothy going up to the uh the wizard and you know the two flames coming up from the side but it's pretty cool so even though the muppets tv show was canceled there's still a lot going on with them at the park i think the show will probably come back at some point i don't know why they changed the formula so much from way back they have to like not reinvent the wheel maybe and bring the show back the way it was uh, in any event, uh, they're doing stuff with them in the park. Remember where Pizza Planet was? I was not a fan of that pizza at all. Hopefully they changed the pizza. Now they're opening up Pizza Rizzo. Rizzo the Rat owns this establishment. Apparently the Imagineers are putting hints throughout it about you know, Rizzo, his family. There's supposed to be a cheesy banquet hall. Should be fun. Now, over in the Magic Kingdom, the Muppets are also doing something in Liberty Square by the Hall of Presidents. The Muppets present great moments in American history. From what I can gather, it is a live Muppet show, maybe pre-recorded voices, but we're going to see the Muppets. Like, I don't think it's screens. I think it's the Muppets. I don't know if they're in the windows above the Hall of Presidents or there's like a stage around there, but they're going to be presenting different shows throughout the day of moments in American history. 
Uh, Kermit the Frog, Miss Piggy, Sam Eagle. Very excited about this. Starts in October, I can't wait. Also, Pizza Rizzo opens in the fall, so probably around October. It started off as a pretty slow news month, to be honest, and then things just started happening that I didn't even expect. The Abracadabar, the magic-themed bar on the boardwalk, a lot of fun. All the drinks are exactly $12, not too crazy. They could be $16, $17 drinks. $12 across the board. A lot of fun drinks. Beautiful looking place. Bits of magic going on here and there. Take a look at the Abracadab Bar on the boardwalk. This drink is actually a purple margarita. A purple margarita. A purple margarita. So what we'll do is be a purple margarita. Dude, that's not purple. Dude, yeah, it's blue, man. Hang on, we're gonna fix it. We forgot to say the magic word. That's the problem. Ah, uh, Tony. Right, I'm gonna say the magic. You ruined it. I'm gonna wait. Well, I might be wand. out of magic, so let's try Can it. I, may I? May I put my stuff? I on? would love to. Actually, you know, let me give you a magic wand. There you go. Abracadabra. Okay, the other magic is. Look at that ice cream stuff. Alakazam. All right, you ready? One, two, three. You said abracadabra. Abracadabra bar. There it is. Wow. Alakazam. Now let's try. Ah, oh, there wow. it is. Ah, very nice. There it is. Isn't that a great presentation? More delicious. Pretty cool place, huh? Okay, so another bar I went to, uh, Trader Sam's, and Trader Sam's had Tiki Fest. Steve Seifert, a gentleman that does Tiki Man pages, I've known him for a very long time. Uh, he put on Tiki Fest 2016 in the Trader Sam's bar. Uh, you have to find it, if, you, if the Polynesian is your favorite hotel, if you like tropical things, tiki things, you really want to follow tikimanpages.com. I met up with Steve Seifert after Tiki Fest, where Kevin John was a, a featured artist, and I spoke to Steve a little bit more about his site. <laughs> uh, Steven Seifert has Tiki Man Pages. I've talked about it in the past because I think he knows, and I don't know if you know, my favorite hotel is the Polynesian, and I love tiki stuff. So, uh... Like this. Like that. He's he's a little... He's, you've been drinking a little. Had a few of these. Okay, so this is a wonderful event. This is really cool. We just got out of Trader Sam's. How would you describe what we just had? What just happened? It was like a family fest. It really it was. It really was. Close-knit people. This was my way of saying thanks to the people who have supported me over the years and friends I've made along the way. Um, we had Trader Sam's to ourselves. It was it really very felt relaxed. Like a, big, a big hug. It was. It really was. It was like a big party that I couldn't have thrown at my house, and yeah. it wouldn't have been as quite as it themed. It wouldn't be as good. No. Unless no. you did, you could do some stuff outside your windows, maybe. I have, have some tower, pretty cool stuff at my house, and I can make some good drinks, but it's nothing like that. Yeah. We had Kevin John here, uh, the artist, who is the guest of this month's show, and uh, he did a piece for us. Uh, I think I might have one actually to give away on the show. We we'll find out. We sat down in Trader Sam's um, in January and hashed out some ideas what we wanted to do for artwork for this event and now you've seen the result it's now awesome. you own, you own one of the results of and that and the i love the octopus with the wine bottle has yep, to do yep. with in trader that was something we talked about that night okay so tikimanpages.com i'll put it somewhere on here uh you're still doing that obviously yes i am uh, and yeah, if you need to know anything Polynesian, Polynesian DVC, is there anything I'm forgetting about Tiki Man Pages? No, I mean, uh, Tiki Man Pages will have all the information for helping you not only plan to stay here, it, there's a planning section that kind of gives you ideas on if you want to pick, uh, you know, club level or, or what the different views are or where the views are in the buildings. It gives you maps of the resorts, uh, the different amenities, um, activities, things like that. Um, and it also has a history section, so if you kind of want to know how the resort has evolved and how things have changed and what used to be here and what's here now. Um, and then there's also a Facebook page, which I'm pretty active on. Uh, it's really things. a great resource. Yeah, it's a, a good Polynesian. place to go. Or if Some people go there for information. Some people go there just to kind of remember, you know, it might be their favorite resort, and it's kind of a way to make them feel like they're back here and enjoying it again. So try to make friends with this guy so that you can go to Tiki Fest 2017. <laughs> thank you very much, Steve. We'll have you again soon. Yeah, thank you. It's thank good you, to sir. see you. Before you know it, it's going to be Halloween and then Christmas, which I, it's just, I can't wait. Christmas is my favorite time of the year. I love Halloween. I love Halloween Horror Nights. We'll cover that probably a lot more next month. But Gaylord Palms, uh, not Disney, but the Gaylord Palms Hotel always does a lot for Christmas and does feel very 
Christmassy to me, very holiday themed. Uh, they do the ice exhibit and they wanted to reveal what the theme was this year. Each year it's a different theme like Shrek or something like that or maybe Kung Fu Panda. This year they uh, revealed what the ice exhibit is going to be and they told us more about the show uh, Cirque Dreams Unwrapped, which is their Christmas spectacular acrobatic show. We found out more about it. That's right, ice brings the joy of the holidays to thousands and thousands of people every year. So we thought this year our friend could help us bring the real meaning of Christmas to Florida. What do you all think? Uh, can our friend help? Uh, make some noise and put your hands together if our friend can help this year. Oh. Come on! <laughs> to ice this year. That's right, you'll be able to experience this holiday favorite brought to life in front of your eyes in the form of giant ice sculptures. Okay, so you're in the park, you're catching Pokemon, or you're on the phone, your battery dies, you're taking pictures, you're posting to social media, there's no more battery. What do you do? You find a, hopefully you have your wire, you find an outlet. Disney now has a solution. Uh, it's a different company that joined with Disney called Fuel Rod. Uh, Fuel Rod is a battery that Disney has kiosks throughout the parks, even in Disney Springs. And you, for $30, you purchase this battery. So you put $30 into a kiosk, battery pops out. It has all the wires you need for iPhone, Android, all the stuff like that. So you charge your phone. Now that battery dies. What do you do? You go right back to the kiosk, no more money. Another one pops out, fully charged. That one goes, what do you do? right back to the kiosk another one comes out fully charged you're constantly exchanging them in perpetuity forever so thirty dollars forever you have this battery if you want to keep it and charge it yourself at home that's fine but when you're in the park you just put in the machine and a new one comes out there's about four or five locations in the magic kingdom one right now at epcot they need more uh, there's one or two in Disney Springs, about two, I think, in the Animal Kingdom, and a few over at uh, Hollywood Studios. It's just a very convenient thing when you need, you know that you're never going to be without a battery for your phone. Over on iDrive 360, the entertainment complex that has the eye and Madame Tussauds Wax Museum, right in the vestibule there is a new 7D dark ride experience. It's not really a dark ride per se on a track, it's a simulator. It's a 3D movie with a gun, but it's a little bit more fun than you think. It's got good interactive feed, uh, tactical feedback, good interactivity where you're shooting the things on the screen. There are about five different programs, whether it be zombies or Godzilla. I like the Godzilla program so far at the most. Uh, the, the seat shakes back and forth. We met up with Matt who tells us a little bit more. Matt Jervia tells us a little bit more about the 7D dark ride experience. Hello, Mr. Matt Jervia. Hey. All right, tell me about this uh, 7D dark ride adventure. Okay, if you've never been on one, this is amazing. Not only is it motion seat, but we have stereo surround sound next to your head. We have a weapon that has endless ammo. You have 3D goggles. So I get to shoot things. So, uh, you have to shoot things. The screen actually bends around you where the eight seats are, and you are in the movie. This is not a movie ride, because you are fully involved in this movie. You have to shoot to stay alive. You have the zombies, you have robots, you have uh, Gigamon, which is like Godzilla. You have, we have Road Warriors, which is like Mad Max. You gotta literally fight to stay alive and save the day. And now let's cover some merchandise, including the new Dooney and Burke Magic Bands. Thank you, Linda Raymond. Uh, with Corinne Anderson in another episode of Massaholics. Hi everybody and welcome to Disney Springs. Today we're going to check out some of my favorite merchandise picked for the month of July. And there's some good stuff this month. Come along. Okay. So my first pick for the month are the new Dooney and Burke Magic Band. These are exclusive guys and they're going fast. So if you're familiar with the Dooney and Burke bags, they now have the Prince and Magic Bands. And look at the box they come in. That. This is the fancy stuff you can get people in their limited edition to $1,548. Get to Marketplace Co-op, Disney Springs, right now and buy one. So for my second pick, we're going for some more home decor. So in Marketplace Co-op, which has the most unique items you can find on Disney property, just released a new Believe in Magic home collection. 
And my favorite pick is definitely this little teapot. I mean, it's adorable. Look at the little Mickey up here. Even if you don't drink tea, you can use this as a decorative piece. There's plates, there's towels, frames, glasses, everything to make a Disney kitchen. Best pick ever. So we're going for my last pick and it's going to be another kind of collectible home decor piece and this is for you Haunted Mansion fans. This is brand new. Seriously, we got the word today. There's new signs that are featuring Memento Mori. That's our first sign over here. And this is reminiscent of the shop that's in Magic Kingdom. I'm sure you all recognize it. It's so cool. And the second one is actually a little more inspiration from Disneyland as this is the Mattis Hatter, the Hatbox Ghost. And this is another sign, and it kind of looks like it glows in the dark, guys. Wouldn't that be cool? I'm sure you can fix it somehow. So that's all for this month, guys, here from Disney Springs. And come back next month to see even more of my favorite merchandise picks. And for merchandise every day, visit Disney Lifestylers on Instagram. And once again, let me mention my exclusive sponsor, David's Vacation Club Rentals at <laughs> DVCRentals.com. Uh, if you go to their Facebook page, facebook.com slash Rentals, we are doing a lot more Facebook Live uh, videos there. I mean, really, you could be at home and you just want to see wishes, and chances are that it's either a video that just passed or it's coming. We're doing a lot more there because it's not just me doing the videos now. There's other people doing the live videos now, so make sure you visit that. Also, I do a lot of their videos on their YouTube page, which is youtube.com slash Rentals. Uh, we're doing more night videos, stuff like that that does room and resort videos. Even now on the Facebook, we're starting to do a little bit of 360 videos where you turn your camera and you can see around you 360. Also, look at their website, dvcrentals.com. There's a price calculator. Uh, a lot of people are surprised to find that out where you can put in your dates and what hotel you want to stay at. and It will tell you exactly what it would cost to go through dvcrentals.com rather than regular reservations. And many times you're saving a ton of money, 20% to 50%, sometimes even more than that for the exact same accommodations and the exact same benefits, dvcrentals.com. And now let's get to our guest, Disney master artist, Kevin John. And as promised, Disney master artist Kevin John is here. I have to give you the panda hug. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. How are you? Wonderful, wonderful. It's a so, pleasure to be here. It's an honor. Okay, after this, you're going to the Polynesian. Yeah, man. I'm pretty. Well, I'm, I'm excited. Lots I'm lots not of. even going. I just <laughs> I know. know how that feels. I know. I'll see you there Saturday, though. I will see you yeah. Saturday. That's cool. Okay, so let me start off with uh, before we get into Disney, which is what we're going to talk about with him, because you are a Disney master artist. Yes. But we are going to talk about first how you got started. Yeah. It's sports stuff, right? Yeah, and, and even before that, I mean, I'm, I'm a professional artist almost 30 years. been doing this since I was 17 years old. Okay, so that's so it's your passion. You just, I mean, even before you were 17, did you just start to draw? Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, is, I mean, it, it, as early as I could pick up crayons and pencils and, and you know, replicate things that I saw or things that I enjoyed, like Batman and dinosaurs and Scooby-Doo and things like that. Did you realize that, like, I remember drawing and I remember thinking, oh, I'm pretty bad at putting what I think of onto paper. Did you realize, hey, I'm good at this, or did people just tell you, wow, you did that good? Um, it was a combination of both. Um, I didn't know that I could do something that that other most other people couldn't until I saw what other people were attempting <laughs> to do. <laughs> Oh, I think I'm pretty good. <laughs> I got something, yeah. Um, I might not be smart, I'm not fast, but boy, I can draw. Very good. Um, so, yeah, so that, it, that happened pretty pretty early. I mean, I can remember drawing with my cousins, you know, when I'm four or five years old, and they were a little bit older than I. And they're and, making um, stick figures, and you're yeah, making like... Yeah, yeah, and, and And a couple of them were, were pretty talented, too, but, um, you know, there were, you know, they were a couple years older than I, and, and I'm keeping up with them. Um, so that, that was real early, but I got serious about it in high school, you know, when I realized that, you know, this is the way I wanted to earn a living. Um, so I started selling work professionally when I was still a senior in high school. Um, at that point, it was all um, historical uh, locations and points of interest in my hometown, Erie, Pennsylvania, right on the lake, very historical town, Battle of Lake Erie and all of that. So um, I featured those things in pen and ink, black and white illustrations. 
and that's what sold in local galleries and gift shops and things. Awesome. Then over the next five, ten years, that slowly transitioned to creating sports art for pro athletes and for their teams. Did you start doing it on your own first and then they took note or they asked you seeing your other work? Correct, right. I, I, I've always had a deep dedication to um, charitable causes and helping those causes through my artwork uh, or with my artwork. And um, I was lucky enough to be in an event with a, um, a, a NFL football player, and he said, "Hey, I'm opening up a restaurant. Would you like to draw a drawing of me that I can put in the restaurant? You know, me playing football." So that's how it started, and um, that drawing kind of got around the locker room, so to speak. And so I did a lot of work for that team, and then it started, you know, with other teams, and, and it was all very exclusive stuff. I got a gig with ESPN to create artwork awesome. on camera during these major sporting events, Golf Channel, you know. Did you ever feel that as like a lot of pressure? It was your thing. It's it's no, it's Aquaman's in the water. Yeah, it, it, what a great way to put it, John. What a great way to put it. I, people always say that, you know, well, you had you know millions of eyes looking at you creating this art, and it's like, man, it's like being it's like a, being a musician on stage. That's where that's, that's when you want to shine. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's, that's fun. Your thing. Yeah, yeah. So how did Disney start? Um, well, I know you you like you were kind of a Disney. Oh, I was fan. a huge Disney, huge Disney fan. Um, from my earliest days, I mean, I've always loved Walt and Walt's story, and um, I certainly loved the films. Um, I loved a lot of the live action stuff, um, and and then Disney World was my honeymoon location, you know, and that started the madness for me with uh, the resorts, you know, in the, in the late 90s was the first time that I was there. I went to Disneyland when I was a kid um, and certainly loved that. Um, so it's always been a part of my life and, and Walt being such a huge influence on me since the time I was very young. So, so that was always there. I moved to Florida four years ago and Doing any work with Disney was not part of this thing because you think it's really hard to get in with someone at Disney. That and the fact that I I spoiled sports for myself because I worked in the industry where I used to play. It's like being typecast. Right. I well, yeah. I was an athlete. I was a coach. I loved going to football games. I loved consuming sports as a fan, and then you end up working in sports and you see behind the curtain uh, yeah. and it's not always that's like if I pretty. worked at the park I probably wouldn't have this right yeah right. I, I would, it would ruin it a little bit for me for sure so the idea of doing anything with Disney professionally um I guess it was it was a desire but that I kind of would always talk myself out of it because um I, I didn't want to work where I played well then a phone call came you know and uh from Disney and they were now this interested. This is from them seeing your sports stuff. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. They 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 saw that, and you know, I, I I had built my sports brand to national prominence, you know, and I was selling a lot of artwork, and I think that you know when you do that, when you have some credibility behind you, you know, they took notice, and um, and the style that I work in was something that they didn't have either. You know, I Speaking don't, of style, yeah. is and I, I, I'm totally aiming at this, is mm -hmm. it like watercolor sometimes? I, I see some of that in your shark stuff, I think. Yeah, yeah, well I'm a mutt, you know, I'm untrained. I, I only have a high school education, so I didn't go to art school or anything like that. So I, I take, you know, watercolors and colored pencil and markers and, and anything that I can find to get the job done. Um, acrylics. So if somebody whatever. says, "What is your style?" What's the answer? well? The style is stylized realism, but the medium that I use is mixed. I okay. use whatever, whatever, whatever I feel will get the job done. Okay. And and I've got, you know, friends of mine that are artists that can't figure out how I'm achieving what I'm achieving because even when I paint in, with a very traditional watercolor medium, I'm using it in such a non-traditional way. You know. Um, that that That's people just can't figure thing, it yeah. out, you know. But for me, it's just you know why drive a car straight when you don't have to. You know, you can go this way and that. And and I'm not the most creative person in the world, but what I like to think is that I can portray um, these things like we like we see them. 
Yeah, you like know? I noticed when you do fire, it looks pretty real. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, with the tiki. Yeah. Getting thank getting you. to okay now I I don't know if you see I see a lot of your tiki stuff mm -hmm. and I see a lot of your haunted mansion stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now that's because I am the Polynesian is my favorite hotel, mm -hmm, and the too. haunted mansion is my favorite attraction. Yeah, me too. I know that's that's yeah, weird. That's yeah. usually that doesn't you know find a lot of people that have yeah. exactly the same. But I'm sure you do a lot more stuff that I'm going to try to put up here. Sure. But when you do something for Disney, do they commission exactly what they want, or do they ask you to use your, like with the food and wine, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. figment? Right. Do they right, say, right, "Hey, we'd right. like figment." No, no. It's you know, again, back to the original, um, the original portion of the story. Disney contacted me. Uh, they they. And, and put this contract in front of me to create art for their art galleries, and and at first I didn't see it because I don't I don't do Mickey and Minnie, and, and that's really not what I was doing you at the time. You weren't thinking of saying no. I, I had not a piece of Disney art in my portfolio. I ignored the I ignored the messages for about a month, month and a half, till finally my girlfriend says, "Will you just call them back? You know, see what they see what it is." I, I just didn't see the fit. So. Um, what they were interested in is that stylized realism that I create. Um, and they didn't want so much the characters portrayed that way, but they wanted those environments within the parks portrayed through my art. Giving you, the fans, a, a, an opportunity to, to bring home those in-park experiences that we love so much and hang them on their wall and be able to reflect on those um, moments from the parks and, and, stuff. and sure, the attractions absolutely. and those type of things. So that I was into. That I can do. Um, not that I couldn't do Mickey and Minnie, but there were so there are so many wildly talented character animators and character artists that um, I why why muddy it with Kevin John? You know, I mean, um, you're going from real life people to imaginative dragons yeah, and stuff yeah. that's got to be weird but yeah it's obviously it's, did the transition it, it's driving it's driving a car to driving a truck you know there is some adjustment you know i had to find my style with disney you know i had to find a rhythm um they they pretty much give me carte blanche um i submit sketches and concepts of what i'd like to produce and they tell you which one to and they say yeah we like that idea go with that Let's refine it a little bit. Um, take this out, put this in. Um, we don't want to go that way. Yes, we do want to go this way. You know, so there's which I really love. They guide you a little. Yeah, it's great. I it, there is some um, critique involved there, and I really like that. It pushes me to become a better artist. Um, Can they use any of your love, like the fact that you love the haunted mansion? Do they know that and? help you with that or I don't think that really comes into the conversation they don't say, much. Uh, you don't think if they think of a haunted mansion thing they can then say hire Kevin John he likes that or not really um it's more your thing yeah it's really so when I see you do yeah. the hat box ghost mm -hmm. that was my idea that's your idea yeah but did that wind up getting sold in the parks and stuff or is that yeah. just yours oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 so yeah. it does yeah so it's right so essentially what 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 I do is I I first looked at, you know, what are my favorite things in the park? What are some of the more popular things in the park? Let's hit those first. And rewind the clock for years, and you would say Hatbox Ghost to someone, to the casual, even the casual Disney fan. And they'd say, what, huh? What is, what that? is that? So anyway, so we did Hatbox Ghost. Um, I followed that up with the figment piece, the okay. flowers and figment. Fla flower and garden festival. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And, and essentially that was, I wanted to create a piece that talked about you know, my favorite time at, at, at Epcot. And I just love Flower and Garden. Nothing against food and wine or any other seasons. I just happen to love Flower and Garden. Me too. And um, so Do I Do you ever look at it and go, how could this not be here sometimes? Like all these flowers? Yeah, yeah, and I forget yeah, how yeah. barren it looks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And it's a delight. It really is a delight to the eye. Especially when you go over with the model. Yeah, People don't crazy know that. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Facebook. Yeah. What is your Facebook? It's uh, I'll put it. Kevin Dash John and then Jabinski, that horrible last name thing that's seven feet long. But um, that's how you'll find me. But go. Sometimes on Facebook, yeah. you'll put like the beginning of something and you'll <clears throat> see its progression. <clears throat> and that was an awesome one to watch Thank progress. It was you. great. That was a fun one to do. And, I, and I'll and i revisit t the Tiki Room several times. You know, there's just so much goodness there. And to me, that's part of like the <clears throat> Polynesian Hotel kind of too. <clears throat> that's why. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, right now, all, literally on the drawing board is my first Pirates of the Caribbean piece, and it is the 
it, and, and we'll be able to show it here, I'll send you. Uh, it is the um, skeleton helmsman steering the ship. Right before you go um, down the Right before you, you go down the waterfall. So he is there, and in the distance you see this light, it's night, you know, and you see this lightning storm coming up onto a beach, you know, way in the back, and the palm trees are blowing sideways awesome. and stuff, and he's there, and his white hair is blowing in the wind, and he's there just steadfast, holding that ship's course against all odds for eternity. So that's my next piece. You'll see a rough sketch of it here, Will. I'll awesome. send it to you so you can put now, it up. Where are the places that we can buy it? Do, do we have to go to Disney somewhere in here? Yeah, all of, my, all of my Disney art is exclusive to Disney. Okay. So... The art of Disney galleries, the gift shops, like Memento Mori outside the Haunted Mansion carry some of my Haunted Mansion okay. pieces. The Epcot piece, you got to go to Epcot to buy. Okay. Um, but if you go to um, the Disney uh, Disney Shop Disney app, you can key in Kevin Dash John, Kevin John, and my art will come up awesome. for purchase. If you're not in the parks, if you're in the parks, just ask for it, Kevin John. And they will uh, they'll lead you right to the to the art. Now on your website, I can't see your Disney art at all. Yeah, you can see it, but you can't buy it. Okay, but yeah, you can yeah, see yeah, it to, yeah, to yeah, a yeah. note of, just yeah. in case somebody at Disney doesn't. Uh, you know, I go to one of these shops. Maybe it's a new employee. Right, right. And they don't know whose artist is yeah, what. Yeah. So what is your website? Uh, the main website is kevinjohn.com, kevin-john.com, and from there you'll find my Facebook link, my Twitter link, the links to my studio store where you can buy non-Disney Kevin John art, everything from sports to tiki and beach life and everything in between. Speaking, I just got to mention one that I saw, which was the big shark face. So Jaws yeah. happens to be, I just yeah. found out that Jaws is a big thing with him. Yeah. All right, so are you doing anything for this flower and garden coming up or you don't know? How far in advance no. do you... Um, I book out about nine months in advance. Okay. So my next few Disney projects are are pretty much in the can, ready to ready ready to. I have to finish the pirates piece. Um, then we go to Jungle Cruise after that. Okay. So um, I try to not. Did be I see as, something about Jungle Book? You already fooling around with it? Uh, Jungle Cruise. Yeah. yeah. Jungle, Jungle Cruise. Cru yes. Not yeah. Jungle Book. Yeah. Jungle yeah. I've got some. some I saw something. Yeah, you were fooling around. Yeah. With. We'll show them here. Did you ask on Facebook like yep. which what should the, what animal yeah. or something? Should they. Be? I I asked what what they would what direction the fans would rather me go in. Yes. Um, next. Um, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean or Jungle Cruise. Okay. And they voted Pirates. Okay. So we went to do Pirates and now Jungle Cruise will be the follow-up piece. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anything I put on this board here is not copyable and will be watermarked, but check him out. Kevin John, thank you so much. Thank I will definitely so have you back This here. was awesome. Right? And see, we don't have to edit anything. That's great. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And there you have it, show number 37. Before I forget, the prize for this month. Yes, the shirts are coming back. I had to solve a little issue where they were making the panda a little gray and not as black as he should have been. We're paying a lot for these shirts, so we have to make sure they're the best quality. So they will be back next month. But Kevin John, the artist, gave us a print. Take a look at this. That print has embellishments right from Kevin John, plus his signature live on it, and it will be yours, sent to you in a really nice envelope so that it doesn't get bent or anything. You can frame it, put it up, especially if you're into tiki's, you're going to love Kevin John. How to uh, be put into that contest? You have to thumbs up this video, make sure you're subscribed to BigFatPanda.com and put any comment here on this channel, and I will choose from one of the comments. It's random, we, don't, we do read the comments, but the comments don't matter as to if you get the prize or not, so just put any comment and you're in the running for the prize. And once again, let me remind you, if you, a loved one, a family member, are planning a trip to Walt Disney World, please check out DVCRentals.com. You will be glad that you did. I can't tell you the amount of people that come up to me and thank me for recommending DVCRentals.com. You should be one of them. Just check it out. Know what it is. If you don't use it now, you may in the future. There's a price calculator, like I always say, right on the website. You don't have to call anybody. You can if you want to. There's a whole office of people there. It's a real company. So check out DVCRentals.com. So go forth. Create pandemonium. And above all, please keep giving out those panda hugs. This world needs it now more than ever. Hug someone really makes a difference. Thank you guys. Until next time, Panda out.